Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Snowbeck. And before we start uh, lesson 6.4, I want you to think back to our previous lesson when we talked about some special right triangles. The first one that we talked about was called the 45-45-90 triangle. And the reason it was called a 45-45-90 triangle is because the three angles inside of it were 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees. Well, if you have a triangle where two angles are the same, then you're also going to have two sides that are congruent. So if you go opposite of those angles, this side and this side would be congruent to each other. So if this leg is x, this leg would also be x. Now the hypotenuse is going to be whatever the length of that leg is times square root 2. And we memorized those proportions that they, the legs would be congruent, x and x, and then the the hypotenuse or the diagonal of the square, you just take that leg times root two. The other special right triangle that we studied was the 30, 60, 90. So imagine we have a 30 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 90 degree angle. Now remember, the shortest side is across from the smallest angle. So this would be your short leg over here. And we called that short leg X. And whatever that short leg was, we doubled it for the hypotenuse. So it would be 2x. So remember, the hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle. And it's the longest side in your triangle. That means that over here is going to be our long leg. And our long leg was whatever the short leg was times root 3. So the legs had a ratio of x to 2x to x root 3. So now think back to similar triangles. If you have two triangles and they have two angles that are congruent, like here we have the 20 degree angles and the 90 degree angles. So that means that their third angles have to be 70 degrees because the angles in every triangle add up to 180. Well, these triangles are similar to each other. And if they're similar to each other, they're proportional to each other. So can you imagine like we memorized the ratios of the sides? for 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90. Can you imagine if now we had to memorize 20, 70, 90? Or maybe we had to memorize uh, 21, 69, 90, or 22, 68, 90, and so on and so on. The good news is I'm not gonna make you memorize all the different right triangle uh, ratios. That would be really hard to memorize all the ratios of their sides. So let's start the notes for Unit 6, Lesson 4. We're going to start something today called trigonometry. And trigonometry is the study of triangle measures. Specifically today, we're going to study right triangles and the ratios between their sides. And about 2,000 years ago, there was a group of monks. They were mathematicians, philosophers, and they discovered this. They discovered that if you had a right triangle, all the right triangles with angles 90 and 24, for instance, uh, were similar to each other. And if you took the length of their short leg and divided it by the hypotenuse, you got 0 0.4067. If you took the short leg divided by the hypotenuse, you got 0 0.4067. And what was cool is they made a chart. They wrote down these measurements and these ratios so that the average human would not have to memorize them. So here is a chart of those ratios that these monks discovered. For instance, if you look right here at the 24 degree angle, you can see that the ratio of the short leg divided by the hypotenuse is 0 0.4067, just like we just saw. Now back when your grandparents went to high school and they studied trigonometry, they had a chart like this in the back of their math book and they would have to flip back and use some of the data from this chart to do their math problems. When your parents were in high school, they also probably were shown this chart, but they got to use this little thing called a calculator. And so, for instance, when I was in high school, I'm about the same age as your parents, I learned how to use this chart, but I also learned how to do these proportions and these ratios on my calculator. And so somebody back in like the 60s figured out, hey, why don't we program these numbers into a calculator, then we don't have to refer back to this chart. Well, nowadays, we're not going to teach you the chart version because you're going to have a calculator with you no matter where you are. And so we're going to show you just using your calculator today. So 
the, the three trigonomic ratios that we're going to study, the first one is called sine. Sine is going to compare an opposite side to a hypotenuse. Cosine is our second ratio. The cosines are going to compare an adjacent side to a hypotenuse. And our third ratio is tangent. And tangents are going to compare opposite sides to an adjacent side. So the first thing we have to figure out is what in the world is an opposite side, a hypotenuse, and an adjacent side? Well, we're going to start with angle A. You can see right here they want us to find the sine of A. So that means go to angle A, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite of A means across from. Opposite of angle A is side A. So we're going to put an A on the top of the fraction. And then it says over hypotenuse, and you can see hypotenuse is C. So the sine of angle A would be A over C. That would be its ratio. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now the adjacent side is going to be a side that touches the angle. So we're going to find the cosine of A, and I need the adjacent side to angle A. And so this right here would be the adjacent side. Technically, the hypotenuse is also adjacent to angle A because they both touch angle A. But since C is already the hypotenuse, we don't call that the adjacent side. We call the other side that touches the angle the adjacent side. So if I was going to find the cosine of A and I had to do the adjacent over the hypotenuse, it's going to be side B over side C. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if I want the tangent of A, I take the side opposite of A, which is little a, over the adjacent side, which we talked about is B. Okay, let's try some more. Let's use the same picture, but let's work from angle B. So let's find the sine of B. Now I go to angle B in my picture. Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So what's opposite of angle B? Well, it's side B or little b. And then it's over hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is still C. So it's going to be over C. Let's find the cosine of B. The cosine of B is going to be the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. We have to figure out what side is adjacent to angle B. So in this case, this side touches angle B and this side touches angle B. This side is already the hypotenuse, so A would be considered the adjacent side to angle B. So it's going to be A over C. And if we wanted to find the tangent of B, remember tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if we're working with angle B, we have to find the side that's opposite, which is B, over adjacent, which is A. Okay, so let's practice this with some real numbers. Let's find the sine of J. So you go to angle J, and you have to remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And so opposite of J is 5 hypotenuse is 13. So the sine of j would be 5 over 13. Let's go to part b. Let's find the cosine of j. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side to angle j is right here. It's 12. 13 is also adjacent, but it's already considered to be the hypotenuse. So 12 would be the side that we call adjacent to J. So cosine is going to be 12 over 13 because 13 is the hypotenuse. Tangent, part C. So tangent of J, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite of J, remember it's across from it, so that's 5 and adjacent is 12. Now notice they say express each trig ratio as a fraction and a decimal to the nearest hundredth. So technically you should also write these as decimals. So 5 thirteenths, if you divide that in your calculator, it's approximately 0.38. 12 thirteenths, if you punch that in your calculator, it's approximately 0.92. And 5 twelfths is 0.42. Okay, take a second, and I want you guys to try to do sine k, cosine k, and tangent k. Go ahead and pause the video and come back. 
If you did it correctly, the sine of k should be 12 over 13, which is 0.92. Cosine k should be 5 over 13, which is 0.38. And tangent k should be 12 over 5, which is 2.4. So you might be thinking, where in real life would we use this? Well, here's an example. Um, let's say you're in aerobics class. Let's say you're in Miss Amie's class, and she sets the incline on the treadmill to seven degrees because you're in pretty good shape. The walking distance is five feet long. Approximately how many inches did the trainer or Miss Amie raise the treadmill from the floor? Now we can use sine, cosine, and tangent to solve this. What you do is you look at your angle that's not 90 degrees. In this case, we look at the seven degree angle. Two sides have writing on them. The first side is, well, you can start with either side really, but Y, for instance, is opposite of our angle. Never use the 90, always use the other angle. In this case, we're using the seven, and Y is opposite of the seven. The five is the hypotenuse of the triangle. Now I want you to think about sine, cosine, and tangent. I'm gonna show you a little shortcut. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. You could pronounce this so ka toa you're gonna pick the trig ratio that has the two sides that you need. For instance, we have opposite and hypotenuse, O and H. Right here, you can see sine has O and H, so we're gonna pick sine. So we're gonna go sine of seven degrees equals opposite, which is Y, over hypotenuse, which is five. Now, cool, we have an equation set up that we can solve for Y. All you have to do is multiply both sides by five, or you can think of it as five over one, and then type this into your calculator. So you're gonna go on your calculator and you're gonna type in uh, five sine seven. You'll see those sine, cosine, and tangent buttons in the middle of your calculator there. If you type it in and it's correct, you should get about 0 0.609. And this is technically gonna be in feet, so we're gonna to have to convert this, but first try typing it in and see if you get 0 0.609. If you're not, your calculator may not be in the correct mode. Make sure that the mode on your calculator is in degrees, and then try it again. Pause the video if you need to mess around with that. All right, last but not least, we're gonna convert this into inches, so we're just gonna multiply by 12, 0 0.609 times 12, ends up being 7.31 inches. And that is how far Miss Ami raised the treadmill. Let's try this again. So you start by looking at your angle that's not 90. In this case, we have 25. Two sides have writing. One of the sides is opposite of our angle, and the other side is the 18. Is the 18 the adjacent side or the hypotenuse? Well, it's not the hypotenuse, because that's over here. It's the adjacent side. So the two sides that we're working with are opposite and adjacent. And so think about soka toa. I'm going to write it down here. So ka toa. Pick the one that has the O and the A. Toa. T stands for tangent. So our trig ratio that we're going to use is tangent. We always follow the word with the angle, so tangent of 25 equals opposite over adjacent. The middle letter comes first on top, the last letter goes on the bottom. How do you solve this for x? Multiply both sides by 18. These cancel out. Type it in your calculator, 18 tan 25. You should get x is about 8.4. They don't have any labels, so we don't have to worry about labels in this case. Let's try another one. The bottom of a handicap ramp is 15 feet from the entrance of the building. If the angle of the ramp is 4.8 degrees, about how high up does the ramp rise off the ground? We want to figure out this side. How high up is that ramp? Start with the angle that's not 90. In this case, it's 4.8. One of the sides we are working with is opposite of that angle. 
The other side is the 15 feet. So you have to decide, is the 15 adjacent or hypotenuse? In this case, it is the adjacent side. Think about so, ka, toa, and choose the ratio that has the O and the A. Toa has the O and the A. So we're going to do tangent of 4.8 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. Multiply both sides by 15. Type it in your calculator. And x should turn out to be, I'll pause for a second so you can type it in, 'd end up being 1.26 feet off the ground. All right, we have one left. Go ahead and pause uh, now and see if you can do this one on your own. Your angle is 15, X is the opposite, 12 is the hypotenuse. Think about Sokatoa and choose the one that has the O and the H. O and H go with so, and S stands for sine. So sine of 15 equals X over 12. Notice we don't say sin. <coughs> Even though it's abbreviated, we still say sine. Multiply both sides by 12. Type it in your calculator. 12 times sine 15, and your answer should be 3.11. There's no label, so you can be done. All right, last but not least, let's try this one. This one's kind of interesting. Let's find the sine of L. Now remember, so ka toa, sine is opposite over adjacent. So if I want the sine of L, here's L. Opposite is 2 root 3. Oops. I'm just going to erase this. Sine of L. So opposite is 2 root 3 over hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is 2 root 15. Now, this is kind of interesting. Um, first of all, the 2s can cancel. And then second of all, you can rewrite the bottom to be root 3 times root 5, because 15 is 3 times 5, and these cancel. So really, the sine of L is 1 over root 5. However, we learned, can you leave root 5 on the bottom of a fraction? The answer is no, you have to rationalize the denominator. And so you end up with root 5 over root 25, but the square root of 25 is 5. So root 5 over 5 would be the sine of L. Let's try cosine. So cosine L. <coughs> cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent to L, well, technically both of these two sides touch L, but 4 root 3 is the adjacent side because 2 root 15 is the hypotenuse. So we're going to have adjacent, which is 4 root 3, over hypotenuse, which is 2 root 15. So again, um, you can cancel these out and change it to a 2 because 4 divided by 2. You have root 3 on top. On bottom, you have root 3 times root 5 because that multiplies to be 15. These cancel, so you really have 2 over root 5, but you can't leave that root on the bottom. And so multiply by root 5 in the numerator and denominator, you get 2 root 5 over root 25, which is 5. All right, let's do one last one. Let's try the tangent of L. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite of L, remember, is across from it, so it's the 2 root 3. Tangent is the hypotenuse, which, or excuse me, opposite over adjacent. Adjacent is 4 root 3. This is nice. The root 3s cancel, and we're left with 2 over 4, which reduces to 1 half. Okay, that's it. So will you guys please try Unit 6, Practice 4. If you get stuck, just send me a Schoology message, and have a great day.